Hi there, welcome to 42 Pursuit. In this video, we're gonna be fixing this ATEM Television Studio Pro video switcher by Blackmagic that won't power on. We're gonna be replacing the AC to DC converter. It's this piece that you can get online from multiple places. It's a VCT 60 US 12, and I'll have links for that below. Towards the end of the video, I will also have another option for getting the unit working again that requires a little bit of soldering, but you won't have to take the whole thing apart. Stick around if that's more what you're looking for. First step is flipping it over and removing the screws. Make sure to remove these four corner bumpers and these black strips because there's screws hiding below. Also, there's a fan cover here that needs four Phillips screws to be removed. So to make this easier, disconnect this four pin fan connector. We wanna access the power module that's on the underside of this black plate. So we'll remove the mounting screws so that we can flip that over. Removing this cable tie screw sometimes helps access the bottom left screw. To get easier access for the top right screw holding this plate down, unscrew the one remaining screw that's holding this right side wing on. And it looks like the left wing needs to be removed as well. Now with the two right screws and the two left screws, the four black screws along the top of the back of the unit need to be removed. Now this back piece should be loose aside from two ribbon cables on the left side. Disconnect those by lifting up on the black pieces of the connector on the large circuit board on the bottom and the ribbon cable should slide out. Do that for both. I should fully disconnect this piece. So we'll set the front interface aside. Now the piece that went bad on this is this AC to DC converter board. Looking at it, there aren't any visual signs of component failure, but when connected to power, there's no voltage on the output. So you know this is the culprit. We're getting our power in from this wire and then the DC power out from this wire that jumps over to the circuit board. To remove this board, first disconnect the power in connector and the power out connector, and then remove the four corner mounting screws. Reverse the process and install the new board. Plug the connectors back in, making sure that the bump on the side of the connector faces the little latching tab. Now put everything back together, starting with the ribbon cables. The ribbon cables are a little tricky to reconnect, but make sure that this black latching tab is up connect in the ribbon cable, and then with downward pressure, try to push one side in, and then the other side in, and then make sure, sure, make sure that's seated all the way down. The latch broke off on this one, but that's not a, a big deal. Just make sure that you align it to the back side with the ribbon pressed in there, and then snap that one in. Make sure the ribbon cables are both snug and seated all the way in. Once you've plugged the ribbon cables back into the interface board, you can apply power and make sure that that did fix your problem. And we have lights. I think we're back in business. Now I reverse the process and put everything back together.
as an alternate option that wouldn't require taking this entire unit apart, there is a four pin XLR cable on the back right of the machine that states an input voltage range of 12 to 30 volts and a minimum current of three amps. You can often find a power brick like this that's an AC to DC converter that has specs that match your input there. I'll have links to one or two of these that will work below. If you take one of those, cut off the end that it comes with, which will be some sort of barrel jack. And if you have a four pin XLR cable, you can solder the ground to pin one and the positive voltage wire to pin four. That way, when you plug this into power, it will convert to the right voltage. And when you plug this into your unit, it will bypass the internal AC to DC converter and just power the unit off of this pack. That's a great way to get by if you're in a pinch. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps some of you out there. If you have any questions or thoughts, throw them in the comments below and check the description below for links to the AC to DC converter that's internal, as well as this one and a good four pin XLR option. Thanks for watching. Stay curious and take care.